Hello everyone. I'm Masaki Mizutani, belongs to Osaka City University, Japan. Today, I'd like to introduce a recently published study. The presentation title is Forced Measurements for Grinding Motility of Mycoplasma Pneumoniae. Class molecules bacteria have three types of motility. Spiroplasma swimming, Mycoplasma mobile grinding, and Mycoplasma pneumonia grinding. These two grinding systems are no homology in the genes or protein, so that these are completely different. At the throat, the pneumonia cell binds to the tip of cilium. Then, it grinds down the cilium to the epithelial cell surface. At the surface, the cell gets nutrient or secretes hydrogen peroxide or cause toxin which damages the host cell. So that the grinding motility is known to be essential for the infection. This is the movie Mycoplasma pneumonia grinding on the girl's surface played at five times speed. They show unidirectional grinding movement. The grinding speed in our measurements was about 0.5 micron per second and reported up to 1 micron per second. But generally, the mechanical characteristics and detailed analysis of movement are essential for creating and completing a detailed model for the motility mechanism. However, no information is available about the probes for mycoplasma pneumonia grinding. So here, we focused on the first measurement of mycoplasma pneumonia grinding. To measure the force for grinding, we used optical tweezers. Optical tweezers are the combination of a microscope and a laser. The laser beam, shown as red line, is focused by objective lens of a microscope. At the focus point, electric field gradient is generated by strongly focused laser, and the electric field can capture small molecules. This is an example. We turn on the laser when micron polystyrene beads are captured at focused point of laser. The laser is invisible because the wavelength is more than 1000 nanometer. How to use the optical tweezers for grinding force measurement? At first, we capture a polystyrene bead and bind it to the back end of a pneumonia cell. The cell generates force for grinding and bright in the direction of arrow. And the cell moves forward like this. The beads also moved forward with the cell. But when beads get away from focused point of laser, the bead is pulled back to the focused point. This backward force is called trapping force. And the trapping force increases depend on the distance between the focused point of laser and the center of the bead, so that when trapping force is equal to the propulsion force of pneumonia grinding, the cell grinding stops. This is a movie of force measurement. The cell put the polystyrene beads in the direction of arrow, and then the movement stops. We can calculate the trapping force from distance between the focused point of laser and the center of beads, and the trapping force is equal to the propulsion force of grinding. These are typical time course of force. The broken lines show maximal propulsion force of grinding. The propulsion force in 92 cells were averaged to be 24 piconewton. We compare this to known other bacterial surface motilities. Contraction force of type 4 pyrus was previously measured by optical tweezers, and the values in this area is about 80 piconewton, and in Mixococcus is about 150 piconewton. And previously, we measured the force of mycoplasma mobile grinding. I'll say it again, mobile grinding is no homology to pneumonia grinding. The force of mobile grinding is 113 piconewton. Compared to this, the grinding force of pneumonia was much small. Consider why pneumonia can grind such a small force. The pneumonia has a streamlined cell shape. 
The this shape contributes to reduce friction from liquid flow. The one possibility that this is the reason why the pneumonia can glide such a small force. Here, we measure the propulsion force of a cell, but the cell has hundreds of legs. To characterize the motility in detail, the movement of individual legs should be clarified. To detect the individual leg movement, we added a sialic acid in buffer. Sialic acid is binding target of legs, and normally, in gliding, the cell binds and pulls the sialic acid fixed on the surface. When we add sialic acid in buffer, some legs bind to the free sialic acid. Therefore, the working leg number for gliding decreased, and individual leg movement becomes detectable. We performed force measurement with free sialic acid. This is a time course of force. We magnify the position marked by the yellow box. We can see clear stepwise displacement. The average interval of displacement is 16 nanometer, and that of force is 2.66 piconewton. I explain the stepwise movement using the trajectory of gliding. The pneumonia cell stayed for 4 seconds in the same position, then suddenly it moved 18 nanometer forwards. Then it stayed here for 4 seconds, then moved 16 nanometer forward. Then it stayed for 2 seconds and moved 14 nanometer forward. And the cell repeated the stay and the movement like this. The stepwise movement generally reflects the minimum unit of motility. In this case, it should be movement by individual legs. We think the step size under optical tweezers. The cell binds to a bead, and the bead is captured by focused laser. The cell moves to forward one step, like this. At that time, the cell is pulled backward by focused laser. So that cell experiences a load, it's like a prisoner connected by an iron ball. To check the load dependency of step size, we perform the step size measurement under the wide range of load. In the range marked a white circle, step size decreased when load increased. However, in the range marked a yellow circle, the step size does not depend on the road. It means step size around here is the maximum step size. The average step size of 21 steps was 16.2 nanometer. In fact, road dependency of step size has advantage. A eukaryotic motor protein, kinesin, is known to have not road dependency in step size. In this case, when the kinesin experiences a large road, it showed frequent back step shown the left side of the figure. So that if pneumonia does not have road dependency in step size, a cell moves backward under mucus flow. But pneumonia has road dependency in step size. So even under mucus flow, the cell can move forward. This mechanism is probably important for their infectious process. Next, we think force exerted in single step. Force should be calculated under enough load condition, here in the range marked by a white circle. The average force of 76 steps was 2.5 piconewton. Finally, we update the mechanical cycle of pneumonia gliding. The legs bind to the sialic acid on the grass. Then, the legs pull the cell body with 2.5 piconewton of force and moves about 14 to 19 nanometer forward. Then, the legs detaches from the sialic acid. 
and then compensatory change is recovered and breaks can bind to the next sialic acid. To repeat this cycle in many breaks, the cell glides on solid surfaces. The contents of today's talk are recently published in Frontier in Microbiology. Please check it. Thank you.